So section is over piecewise functions. And so the very first thing that I need to do for you is define what a piecewise function is. And it is exactly what it sounds like. It's a function that is split up into pieces, or a function that uses a different formula for a different piece of the function. And you can see I have an example here. This piecewise function has three different pieces. So my first piece is this piece here. My second piece is that guy there. And my third piece is this piece here. And so in this section, we're going to learn how to interpret the piecewise function and graph the piecewise function and anything else that we may need along the way. Now, probably what you're thinking is why does such a thing exist? Why do we need such a thing in the first place? Actually, piecewise functions show up quite a bit in day-to-day -day life. And I have an example here, which you see it, you probably do this on a daily basis. So this is my applied example to show you that these are actual applications in a real life setting outside of algebra class. Suppose that a car is stopped for a red light. When the light turns green, the car undergoes a constant acceleration for 20 seconds until it reaches a speed of 45 miles per hour. It then travels 45 miles per hour for one minute, which is equivalent to 60 seconds, and then decelerates for 30 seconds to stop at another light. And so basically, we want to graph what the car's motion is. The car's speed is going to be graphed on our y-axis. The car's time it's traveling is going to be graphed on our x-axis. And so what we have graphed over here on the right is um, what the car is actually doing. So if we wanted to actually write a function to talk about this, we would have to write our function in three different pieces. The first piece here, 2.25x, that is going to represent for when the car is accelerating, and so that's why my seconds here are from 0 to 20 seconds. And if we were to look at this piece on the graph, it would be here when the car is speeding up. The second piece is a constant piece because the car travels constantly at 45 miles per hour. It doesn't fluctuate. It does that between 20 seconds and 80 seconds. And so here is the graph of this piece. The last piece of the course when our car is decelerating and the function that gives the car speed is here. And it does that between 80 seconds and 110 seconds. And so the graph of that piece is this piece over here. So you can see why we would need these piecewise functions in a real life setting. Okay, now that we kind of figured out what they are and why we might need them, let's actually figure out how to interpret them and beyond graph them. So I'm going to start with a little bit easier of an example here. This piecewise function is given by two pieces. My first piece is x plus 2, and that is defined when x is less than negative 1. My second piece is 3 minus x, and that is defined when x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So what we want to do in this example is we want to find f of all of these values. And what we're going to do with these values is we're going to plug them into our piecewise function. The thing to note is that you never plug it into both pieces of a piecewise function. You have to figure out which piece to plug it in first and then substitute it into that piece and that piece only. To figure out which piece to plug it into, you have to look at your x value and you have to figure out which interval it fits in. So, for example A, I want to do f of negative 5. This guy here is the x value that I am trying to interpret it from. So, I first look at my intervals over here on the right. I figure out which one it fits into. And then I substitute my negative 5 into whichever appropriate piece it fits into, depending upon the interval. So for example A, I need to figure out is the x value negative 5? Is it consistent with this x value, which is less than negative 1? Or is it consistent with this x value, which is greater than or equal to negative 1? 
So in our example, negative 5 fits into the first interval because negative 5 is less than negative 1. So since it fits into this interval, that means I'm going to plug it into that piece and that piece only. So since negative 5 fits into the first interval, meaning I'm going to use the first piece, the function that I'm going to look at is that piece of the function, the x plus 2 piece. So if I want to interpret f of negative 5, I just plug in my negative 5 into my x value. So that gives me negative 5 plus 2, which simplifies to be negative 3. So my final answer here is f of negative 5 is equal to negative 3. So remember, your first step is to figure out which interval it fits into, and the second step is to plug it into that corresponding piece. So let's move on to example B. B wants to figure out f of 0. So again, I need to figure out which interval does 0 fit in. Is 0 less than negative 1? No. Is 0 greater than or equal to negative 1? Yes. So my interval that I'm plugging B into, part B into, is my second interval because 0 is larger than negative 1. So the function that I'm using is the second piece, 3 minus x. So f of 0 then is 3 minus 0. So my answer to this part is f of 0 equals Moving on to the next one, in part C, I want to figure out f of 5. So I figure out which interval it fits into. 5 is larger than or equal to negative 1. So the function that I use is the second piece, 3 minus x. So f of 5 gives me 3 minus 5. And so f of 5 is equal to negative 2. And hopefully you can figure out the rest of these from here. So now would be a great time to pause the video and do part D and E on your own. Okay, part D, f of negative 9. Which interval does it fit into? Well, negative 9 is smaller than negative 1. So the function that I'm going to use is the first piece because that's the interval that it corresponds to. So f of negative 9 is equal to negative 9 plus 2, and so f of negative 9 is equal to negative 7. The last thing I need to worry about is negative 1 itself. We can see that my two intervals are split apart at negative 1. So which one do I actually plug in negative 1 into? And for this, we use the or equal to piece because it fits into the second interval. Negative 1 is greater than or equal to negative 1. So it fits into my second interval. So the function that I'm going to use is the second piece, 3 minus x. So f of negative 1 is equal to 3 minus a negative 1. My negatives cancel out, leaving me with 3 plus 1. Or f of negative 1 is equal to So we have figured out how to interpret piecewise functions. So my very first step is to figure out which interval am I corresponding to. And then that's going to tell me which piece I substitute in my x value for. Just note here that we never, not once, substituted our x value into both pieces of the function. We can substitute it into one piece or the other, depending on the interval, but never both. In the next video, I'm going to come back with this exact same example here, and we're going to figure out how to graph it.